Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. And we are here today in Cleveland on West 25th Street. And we're here with Marlon Kaplan, chef extraordinaire. Thanks for talking with us today, Marlon. Hey, thanks, Thomas. Appreciate the interview. We've got quite the restaurant scene going here in Cleveland, do we not? This is probably the best that has ever been in the last 20 years. Unbelievable. You guys uh, just sort of moved in over here with Dragonfly. And you are representing Cleveland Independence, which is a group of, what, 90 or so restaurants in the area? Yeah, Cleveland Independence uh, was formed, let me see, almost seven, eight years ago. Um, there are 90 restaurants, and then we have uh, an associate membership that uh, has just been instituted in the last couple years, in the last year. Right. Um, I represent uh, the board. I'm the president of that board. and and. One of the directions we wanted to do was give other members a chance, or people in the food business, to uh, participate. And uh, this associate membership has really been a, a, a really good program for smaller operations that didn't have the same check average as a full-service restaurant. So the, the 90 members are really the, your, your bigger restaurants, your chefs, yeah, it's, independently owned? It's independently owned uh, restaurant with that's full service for the most part. Uh, the associate member can be a uh, coffee shop, pizza shop, caterer, uh, and for that matter. And what does Cleveland Independence do? What does it offer for the members, for, you know, the, it, for the shop? It, its sole purpose is to market and keep the awareness of independent restaurants in the, in the greater Cleveland area. And that's really its sole purpose. So as a member, you get to be uh, in all our different programs, which are from gift cards to uh, an online auction to uh, what we have called a deck, uh, which is a 52 uh, card discount coupon program. And then there's Restaurant Week, which is also the largest promotion that we That's uh, right. offer. That's what's coming up here soon. Yeah, it's, coming, it's coming soon. And uh, it's a really great uh, promotion. Uh, it's very similar to what goes on in other major cities. Uh, the 90 odd restaurants participate by offering a prefix menu of $30 and it uh, is three courses and it gives uh, the diner a chance to experience uh, some things that they wouldn't normally experience at, 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 at a that price point right because it's certainly at a great discounted price point and that's the whole point they're, they're getting a full full service sure. and that is gourmet the, meal and talk about what what the diners can expect they're going to they're going to come in and is everybody offering a different kind of a, a, a well it, you know each restaurant has, has uh, and each chef has designed a, a menu uh, with choices within it that uh, the diner can expect some of the flavors that they would get at that restaurant and i'm sure that there are other things that are not necessarily part of their normal mise en place right right how does Cleveland stack up, do you think? You've been, you've been in the business here, you say, about 20 years, right? I've been here this past September 20 years. That's, that's amazing, because I remember when you first were starting with, with Marlin, right. was your, one of your first restaurants, right? Right. right. And uh, you've been in, in all different parts of the city, but have you seen it like it is these past couple years here in Cleveland? You know, we had an enormous growth spurt uh, in the last couple years. I mean, hence the West 25th Street here, if you, you just take a quick look at it. Oh, yeah. um, the garage bar was one of the first on the street here in 2004. Uh, you just had the addition of uh, Crop Restaurant, which is opening uh, this week. You have uh, Market uh, Garden uh, Brewery, uh, another microbrewery. Uh, you have Beer Market, Barcento, ABC Tavern. Angle, uh, you know, the, the Flying Fig, one of the first <laughs> exactly. here, all right? right? Uh, Light Bistro, I can't, um, it has become an amazing little neighborhood. Uh, has great retail, has wonderful living and housing in it, and it's a very safe neighborhood. Yeah. You know, people probably in the past few years going, oh, it's, you know, it's 25th Street. Well, you got to come down here and see it. It's like the short north of, let's say, Columbus. Right, it is. It's, I mean, it's amazing. As we're seeing here, there's people coming out of the yoga studio. Yeah. There's joggers. I mean, it's, it, it, there's a great mix. You know, you got old, young, gay, straight. I mean, it is an awesome little neighborhood. Uh, not unlike Gordon Square, another burgeoning neighborhood. Exactly. Okay. You've got Capitol Theater, Lux Restaurant, Stone Mad, Redstone. So that's a really fun neighborhood. So you can see this, you know, incredible happening in the neighborhoods of Cleveland and not necessarily downtown and not to 
dispel anything about downtown, but the neighborhoods are really very vital right now. And we do. We, you can see downtown and warehouse district still really thriving. Really you got thriving. East 4th Street. Right, 4th Street's up. become a whole, you know, Disney World for food. What do you think it is? I mean, you've been here long enough, and, and uh, is it just that it's sort of time now that, that enough people, a critical mass of people, are really interested in, in high quality, high cuisine food? I, I, I think, yeah, you're probably right on the money about that. I think the palate of the Cleveland Diner has, has evolved since uh, 1991 when I first got here. And, and uh, you know, we have a, a well educated dining public, a lot of young people who are dining now. I mean, hence the demographic of, of 25th Street. Um, and I think that they'd rather go out and have a nice meal than necessarily have 10 beers. So um, I, I think this is the, the wave of the future. You're considered one of the uh, leaders in the field here. What, what are your thoughts about where this is all going? What, what is the future here? You, you, you see unlimited growth or are you seeing Pockets of growth, different neighborhoods now starting to sprout up. What, what's the well, future? Well, I think I said earlier that you know we do have these pockets in these neighborhoods, and I think that's been the real key to having young chefs be able to come up through it because the point of entry is a lot less uh, than if you were to get your million-dollar restaurant downtown. And now it's it's a lot easier to find a nice storefront. There's a young chef that's going to go in right up the street here called in Soho. Okay, he can start on you know where he couldn't have go downtown. It might be four or five hundred thousand dollars to start up. Right. Where here he's you know probably do it for a hundred thousand. Right, right. So you're seeing a lot of younger chefs. Yeah, I mean that's what Cleveland's been about. It's about really growing some younger chefs, and you know we've had a lot of great people come up through the ranks. I mean we probably have the preeminent celebrity chef right now. You Iron know? Chef. Iron Chef Mike Iron Simon. Chefs, okay. Right? I yeah. mean think about it. Twenty years ago he was a sous chef at Piccolo Mundo. Right. Okay. Right. So um, it's a great place to have your career get launched. It seems like right now, am I wrong? All these chefs from Cleveland are out, have their own TV shows now well, on TV. A lot of people have shows and I mean I don't know if that's the goal. I mean for me I, I'm I'm very content just being, you know, in the kitchen and, and working every day in my restaurant. And I think that is you know the key to growing your career talk about dragonfly a little bit because you took this over not too long ago totally changed it from top to bottom dragonfly is a really interesting concept for me it's kind of it touches back on some things i did in the early days at merlin restaurant uh it's asian fusion i had started that back in the early 90s um kind of got away from it a little bit but this is a, a fully thought out concept there's a sushi bar there's uh it's really, really wonderful uh, Asian food that we, we've made with French uh, accents to it. And it's very modestly priced. Uh, no, no entrees are really over $19. So uh, we, we enjoy a really d diverse clientele here. And being on a young street, I think it's, it's a place where a lot of young people, as well as older people, are enjoying. I was going to say, what kind of people are you getting here? Because I, I, are people coming in from the suburbs? Are these people that are moving because we got more people downtown now? Well, I think it's a mix of both. I think this, the you know the weekends have always been really good for us, and where we have you know a, a good mix of some people coming from the, the near west side, far east side. Right. Um, but we also have you know a lot of people who live in the neighborhood. One last question: East side, west side, Cleveland's always a big dividing line. You were sort of east side downtown, now you jumped over west side. See any difference or is it starting to uh, I, I think just it's, all blend? I think it's all blended together. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that the uh, way that people perceive it's, it's east side, west side, it's downtown. I, I, I think if there's a good compelling reason to, to go out and dine, they're going to come and find it. And I think that's what makes this a really interesting place. Well, it's interesting. This neighborhood's interesting. You're continually interesting. It's been fun watching you in your Th career. Thanks so much, Thomas. Thanks for taking time. You're very Marla. welcome. Thanks so much. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland. Come, <laughs> have Come, have Come, have Come, have Come, have Tom Epps. Tom Epps. Tom Epps. Tom
Yeah. <laughs>